Hey, Har. Hello. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm really grateful that you're doing this. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Thank you for having me. Of course. I think it's really cool that you are being a good sport and doing something different. And I imagine this is probably the first time you've done something like this, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, it's not my usual run of the mill, I suppose, which yeah. is good. Though. I like that. Yeah, exactly. I know. Well, we want to try things different and just do random things. And I guess the reason that I wanted to interview you is everybody has a story. And I feel like I'd love to get to know your story a little bit better. And I'm sure we'll find some nuggets of wisdom along the way. And I almost would love to see this as a souvenir of like this moment in time that maybe we can look back on in years to come. And yeah, I'm sure you'll have some wisdom also for your younger self, potentially. Yeah, that's very true. I agree. Okay, well, maybe if we start with, okay, so of course, you're 21 now, and you've had those years of life, then we're in the present moment, and then we'll touch on where you think you might be going. So maybe if you just want to share your perspective on your childhood and what you learned through those formative years of your life. Oh, formative years. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, that's tough, I guess, because I think... I think it's tough because a lot of the childhood is we don't remember a lot of it because I don't know you just I just don't really feel like you become fully fledged as a person until so much later and uh -huh. a lot of it is just figuring stuff out but I guess the tough part yeah is that you don't even understand what's going on so you don't know what you need to remember what you're not supposed to remember like it's just really hard to actually remember what what occurred but there are i guess a few points that you look back on mm. that are pretty significant and in my childhood uh i think it was pretty unique because i grew up overseas not in australia and um which is where i am now but it was very different to a usual childhood because uh i suppose um well i was homeschooled for most of it which was interesting yeah um and there was a lot of moving around a lot of the time, which was also interesting. But I think that that's one of the, actually one of the big takeaways for me is that through my childhood, I have become quite well equipped at adapting to change because it was always uh, changing a lot just where we were. So I think that, I think that that's one of the biggest takeaways for me is just uh, always being open to new things and ready to make the most of the, I guess the situation that you're in yeah for sure and how did you find the culture shock from growing up in papua new guinea to then moving to australia yeah it was it was large um one of the it's a bit of a funny one but one of the main ones that i remember was actually going to school and a lot of the kids just the way that they would actually speak to adults was a real big surprise to me because obviously where i'm from um i don't know it was I think it was really important to really show a lot of respect to people that were older than you. And um, coming to Australia, I think that not that, well, I guess, yeah, there, there just was a lot less respect for older people sometimes, and it really shocked me. Um, but it was, uh, that, that's definitely one that I remember the most, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, my goodness. And how do people respect the elders in Papua New Guinea? Like, what was your first-hand account of that? Well, it's a bit strange because I suppose the mindset that I've been brought up into isn't exactly the Papua New Guinean mindset as well because both of my parents grew up in sort of a, a in Western households, I suppose. Like uh, my mom's mom was actually from PNG. They've both grown up in Papua New Guinea, but their 
uh, both their like their parents are from Australia as well. So it's not actually culturally exactly accurate, I suppose. So we were in PNG and very much within the culture, but again, we were excluded to a certain degree because um, we that there's just such a difference in um the biggest difference i suppose was the level of education that you get and then that immediately differentiates you from everyone else and it's kind of hard to relate to a certain degree to a lot of other people but um it was uh so i like my my upbringing was very western in um in its nature but around me everywhere i saw there just was a lot more respect for older people stressed all the time where you know i suppose in a country where there aren't as many rules and regulations a lot of the yeah. kids you know like if they if they misbehave towards their parents you know they're punished for it immediately and it's it's in ways that would be it, that would be considered unacceptable in in some in a society like australia mm -hmm. yeah. yeah but it really instills the morale of you really have to respect your elders and wow that's so fascinating i've never been to papua new guinea but i know because you mentioned that you grew up kind of western but then everyone around you of course was more like localized would you say and like had a papua new guinea i guess upbringing i'm not sure what that would look like yeah, but it's very <laughs> tough to explain i suppose because we yeah i guess my grandparents expatriated there so then they're from Australia and they're just Australian people. So they're very culturally Australian. And then they brought up my dad there. Um, so him just being in that world, obviously, he'd have a lot of influence from Papua New Guineans, but he's also being brought up by his parents who are just Australians. And in that time as well, there were so many more Australians in the like in PNG where where we were. Um, but and as we were brought up, we were sort of brought up. Uh, so my dad, again, he, like, again, he's just a white guy, you know. Um, so he's, he's bringing us up sort of the same way that he was brought up. And then um, my mom lived in Australia for a fair portion of her life. Mm -hmm. So again, it's very Western. And then everyone else around us, though, is still uh in a sense it's so culturally different up there so everyone's still being from up there so we you'd sort of it was almost like being it was kind of isolating to a degree because mm -hmm. yeah you know you get you're getting brought up this way but then it's very different to everyone else around you but then you're still you're still part of the community up there and you still you know mm -hmm. hang out with everyone mm -hmm. and that sort of thing but you, you were always different Right. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because I imagine it like whenever there is a difference and we all are different, right, in some way or another, but when it's quite noticeable, did you, how was it then coming to Australia, coming to Cairns? Because I know as soon as you arrived in Cairns and then you went to St. Andrews, like a lot of people were really excited to meet you and you were kind of this shiny new toy. How, how did you navigate that change in your social circumstances at such a young age? Yeah, well, I suppose, so originally we actually moved to the Tablelands near Cairns and that was uh, where we lived originally because it was very similar, uh, not exactly the same, but kind of similar in climate to where we were from. And it was also quite rural, which is where we came from as well. Um, so it just made a lot of sense. But uh, as time went on, we, so I went to a couple of schools up there and that's where I sort of, you know, first became accustomed to just a lot of the, I don't know, nuances of, <laughs> yeah, like, I guess the, so, like the social dynamics and mm. that sort of thing in, in Australia there. But again, it's, it's different again to coming down to Cairns because Cairns is, is more of a city again. So it's, just a whole new world but um when i did come down to Cairns to st andrews i think i was pretty well equipped because again we'd sort of moved around a lot when i was younger and then we moved down to mm -hmm. australia and then we moved again so it was um it wasn't too difficult i don't think to mm -hmm. to slot mm -hmm. in um my biggest uh it, it's actually a bit of a funny one where i yeah. thought okay i'm changing schools in year 12 this is sort of 
a lot of people don't do that because you know yeah, you're told like when you celebrate all those years that you've spent with everyone you've gone to high school with to graduate but i changed schools in year 12 so i was new in year 12 and i thought oh i'm just gonna try to get through this year and i don't really care if i don't make any friends or not because then i can just finish and then go off into the world and do whatever i want to do but even though i had that mindset i actually made a lot of my best friends in yeah. year 12 at st andrews yeah yeah definitely and then got to meet lisa and are you guys have been together for many years now is it up to four uh yeah i think it's five years next year so five years oh my goodness yeah you're it's, part it's, of the furniture yeah. at this point it's, yeah it's a long like, time it really is like i can't remember a time where you two weren't together at this point and of course i've known lisa for a very long time so. yeah of course. Yeah, she was probably like seven or something like that. And she's just, I mean, one of our favorite people in the world, obviously. She is yeah. our denominator. <laughs> but I'd love to hear, Harry, with your experiences going from Papua New Guinea and then Cairns and having all of that change when you were younger, does that make you for the future want to go out and do more of that, go out and see more of the world? Or do you feel like you would rather kind of stay where you are? yeah it's interesting because i do definitely think i'm accustomed to that change and i do actually almost i think get a bit claustrophobic when i'm stuck in the same place for a long time doing the same thing i think that i'm almost getting sucked into some sort of inertia and some sort of pattern that i can't escape so i'm always on the lookout for new things and you know going to new places and i'm so open to different lifestyles i suppose and just trying anything um which differs a lot from from lisa i think and she's good in that respect because i think it's good that i learned to become comfortable just actually almost getting into a routine somewhere because i yeah again i i get claustrophobic and i feel like oh i like as soon as that novelty is worn off it's like oh i need to go do something new again but sometimes it's actually good to um, hang around for a bit longer, I think, and actually really get the most out of certain phases of life. That's a great way of putting it, getting the most out of that phase, because yeah. as opposed to almost like looking for that external like high from going somewhere new or meeting someone new, it's almost then you have to find that high within yourself. And oftentimes that's when you have to kind of step up and, and make the most out of where you are. And I, yeah, I like that way of looking at it. And it's good to have the balance between you and Lisa. Cause yeah, of course. <laughs> the equilibrium is almost like the happiest point when it comes to so many different areas of life. Um, but yeah, it's I definitely have always known that adventure travel side of you. Is there any adventure that really stands out that you've had that has made you feel really happy and, and really alive? Um, I guess there are a couple. There, there'd probably be a few. I suppose my childhood as a whole was a fair bit of just going everywhere and doing everything. So it was uh, it the only thing that really... I suppose sucks to me that's the simplest way of putting it is that i was so young that i struggle to remember parts of it so that it just doesn't um and as an end now that i'm an individual i would experience it so differently but um yeah i don't know i haven't actually been on a lot of i guess trip actually a few of the trips that i've done recently for uni have been quite stand out for me because they've been quite the adventure. The whole uni experience has been quite an adventure because, um, well, I decided to study online, both Lisa and I did. I think it was possibly her idea originally. And I thought, okay, this is actually a great idea because I don't have to go away for university. I can just stay where I'm already comfortable and everything's easy. And now I can introduce this new challenge without upsetting everything else so i thought that was a good idea um and i found this university online the university of new england and i thought okay they say they're the best online uni so i guess this is who i'm going with because they say they're the what? best <laughs> does it say they're the harvard of online uni <laughs> i can't recall something like that but then uh, i thought okay i'll go with these guys and it was super easy to sign up 
with them and get into the university. So I thought, okay, that's a good sign straight away. Like it's not too difficult a pathway to get into. So I, I did that. And then as soon as I started my degree, I looked at the at the uh, scheduling and it says that in weeks, in like the sixth week of my first trimester, it said intensive school. And I thought intensive school. And I was like, what does that mean? And I looked and it's like, oh, you have to go to the university for these days. And I thought, oh, where even is this university? It's in Armadale, which is, I didn't even know where Armadale was. I didn't know that was a place, but it's in rural New South Wales, inland of Coffs Harbour. And I thought, okay, so I guess I have to get to this place in a couple of weeks for my uni so I can get this done, you know? And I remember the first trip I actually did down there. It's a bit of a saga, but I'm going to go through it because it's Yeah, a bit, please. Uh, this yeah, is what we're here for. <laughs> it, um, I remember I organized all my flights and everything and my mom was actually taking me to the airport and then we got there and it said that my flight was delayed. So you have to fly down to Sydney and then from Sydney, you fly back up to Armadale. So it's a bit tedious. Um, so my flight to Sydney actually got delayed. And so I was missing my connecting flight to Armadale and I didn't know what that meant. So I just got on the plane hours after I was supposed to originally, I got down to Sydney and I told them, okay, I've yeah. missed my connecting flight. What do I do? And my school started the next day. So I was pretty uh, unexperienced at this point. So now whenever I go down, I always leave two days gap between so that I know okay. any problems. I still have that time to get there before the school starts. But I was starting the next day, but I was in Sydney and they said, okay, well, you'll, you'll overnight in Sydney, we'll pay for it. And then you'll fly down to you'll fly up to Armadale the next day. And I said, oh, okay, I guess so. But I was gonna miss the whole first day of my intensive school. And then while they were explaining all this to me, I thought, okay, I gotta go get my bags then. So I went downstairs and I went to get my bags and I waited for so long at the little conveyor belt. Um, but my bags never came out. So I thought, what's going on here? I went over to Lost Baggage and I waited in the line for Ever. I think the baggage lineup at Lost Baggage was over 20 people long. It was everyone was complaining. There was a guy that was yelling at them. Everyone was losing it because their bags were lost. I finally got to the front of the line and I said, she said, Oh, describe your bag to me. I'll I'll yeah. go get it at the baggage claim. Mm -hmm. and I described it. And then she came back and she said, Oh, we've actually we don't have your bag. We've lost your bag. And I was just no. at this point, I didn't know what else could actually go wrong. So it was just a nightmare trip. And I just stayed at the hotel. I got to Armadale the next day and I thought, okay, I'll go get all the things that I had in my bag because they were essential to my stay down there. I went to the camping shop and I got all this stuff. And as soon as I finished buying it all, the airport rang me and said, oh, we've got your bag in Armadale oh, now. Where should we pop it off? And I just thought, I uh, just can't, I can't win. I couldn't win with that trip, but it started off so badly, but it ended up being actually really enjoyable by the end because I met all these really cool people that I'm actually good friends with now. And every time I go down for my uni trips, I meet up with them and we sort of organize. So we're all there at the same time. So it's really nice. Yeah. What a freaking story. Oh my goodness. And did you end up being able to return all of the, the clothes? I, I kept it all. I, I just kept oh, all the yeah. stuff because <laughs> I thought, oh, well, you know, now I have another set, another spare set, just in case anything goes wrong again. It happens again. And yeah, with your luck, by the sounds of it, you kind of need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, uh, oh, uh, my. Are you down there at the moment? This reminds me of your Armadale. Like, yeah, your it does. Room. No, this is actually my current living situation. This is my abode. Right. So, yeah, I live with my um i always joke about it with my friends because on paper you know at the moment i feel like i'm actually v doing very well and like you know I'm, like i'm working a lot and i'm still studying and well i'm on break at the moment but you know i feel like i'm getting getting ahead with everything but and i feel really good but then on paper when i describe myself to people it sounds like i'm really not living the best life because you know i say oh yeah you know i live downstairs under my mum and it's like oh so you live in your mum's basement and then um yeah it, it just doesn't sound very good <laughs> that's so funny well it's 
it goes, I guess, back to like the philosophy of do what feels good as opposed to what looks good and what sounds good. So you're setting yourself up. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, no, the light is going to come and it's going to like go over my face. Oh, when no, we're okay. working with natural lighting. Um, okay, okay. I'll just work through it. Uh, but well, yeah. you set up a lot better than mine. I thought I was trying to think of how I could make this set up a little bit better, but this is the best yeah. I got for you today. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's just about being like raw and real. And it's interesting how you spoke earlier about how we forget our youth, but we're like still very young. So yeah. 80, like remembering our 20s is going to be a challenge. So that's why it's good to have these, just even these conversations recorded so that you're going to remember that story because now you've got it in a video that you can look Yeah, back. that's definitely true. I find it interesting to think about when you get older as well because, like, you know, I think scientifically it's obviously uh, it's agreed upon that your childhood years, those really early formative years, you do actually struggle to remember a lot of it, I suppose, because your brain is still developing to a large degree. And um, I wonder whether now that we've sort of reached this point in time where we actually can, you know, form memories, uh, I guess, as best as possible, and we're a bit more aware of ourselves and we can access a lot more, uh, whether in the future, looking back, whether that'll be reflected in how we remember it because you know we remember our childhood and it's really difficult to remember certain aspects but when we look back to this point in time is it going to be that same level of difficulty or will it be a lot clearer will it be easier i almost think because now we have even the social media platforms like for instagram for example where you can kind of have stories of your day because yeah. previously our ancestors never would have had access to that recollection of their or documentation of their lives so i think it will be a bit easier for us but i guess also our memory i believe we distort it over time as well have you ever yeah about that is yeah. our memories are actually um like diluted or we make them up and that's interesting isn't it yes yeah, so i think uh, it's pretty fascinating the way memory works and obviously we're uh, we're both not neuroscientists so we don't know all of it but um i think like that yeah it's very interesting what we hear and one of the big ones that i hear is that a lot of the time when we're remembering things you actually over time like how i just told you that story you actually start remembering remembering rather than the original memory you actually remember the occasions where you've remembered the story so i think that's how it actually you know it's almost like chinese whispers where over time things get exaggerated because you're actually remembering the last time you told the story or the last time you thought about that occasion in your mind rather than the original instance where it occurred Ooh, that's really fascinating, actually. If but, we were to look, yeah, I mean, we're not neuroscientists. I mean, maybe in another lifetime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you were to, like, look back on 2023, speaking of memories, what's something that you would really want to remember? If you could have one moment that you would take into the next decades, what's something really memorable? Oh, okay, this is, uh, this has actually been a pretty big year for me, this one. Um, so there's been lots of different occasions that I definitely want to remember going forward. Um, I guess the biggest standout for me this year definitely had to be, it would have been my birthday, I suppose. My birthday was quite, yeah, it was a bit, it was pretty interesting at the start of the year. So that'll probably be one to remember forever. That was so special. The room was just filled with so much love and people from all different walks of your life. Yeah. And there are young people old people in the middle like it was just it was such a special special memory yeah it definitely was one of the craziest moments i think ever just because one it was a surprise to me and everyone talks about how bad i was at picking up on that surprise planning because there were multiple occasions i think where people were planning it around me and i was just oblivious to it all because i was so focused on i think i was studying at the time and doing all sorts of other things so i just yeah, I wasn't really looking out for it, I guess, but I, I also wasn't expecting it. So I wasn't really primed to look out for cues like, oh, these guys are planning this party. But um, yeah, when it happened, it was the biggest surprise ever. And yeah, the an interesting one for me was the, yeah, the mix of different demographics, I suppose. So 
I found it really interesting that one of my initial reactions actually was, oh, how are all of these people going to socialize together? And I thought, okay, so they're all like, it's, I suppose everyone's there to celebrate my birthday. So they're all there for me. That's the reason they've come along. Mm -hmm. But now they're all from different areas of my life. And I find that as an individual, I'm very, um, I think that I'm very flexible. So I end up, and because of my my openness, I find that I end up in a lot of different, or talking to lots of different types of people where I'll, you know, have certain relationships and they won't get along very well with other people that I'm friends with because they're just different types of people. But I get along very well with both both of them. And I thought in that room, there are so many different types of people in this room. And I just wonder how this is actually going to, like, I almost felt responsible for all of my friends getting along together. Like I had to make sure that everyone was having a good time and that it would go smoothly. But how was the, what was the verdict? How did you feel afterwards? Do you feel like it was a success? Yeah, I, I <laughs> definitely think it was. And I don't really, I, yeah, I guess it, um, I guess, yeah, I, I think it was. It was just a, a lot. And I remember not actually getting a single, I didn't actually have any of my birthday cake or I didn't have a single bit of food the entire night because I was so preoccupied by attempting to make sure that I saw every person and had sort of a conversation with every person that came that night because I thought it was so important that, you know, all these people are there and I was like, oh, I, ha I have this responsibility to make sure that I acknowledge that they're here to celebrate this. Yeah, oh my God. People say the same thing about weddings, don't they? How it's almost like it's such a blur because you only get a few hours to say hello to everyone. And yeah, but as you say, it's one of those things that you'll look back on at the end of the year and, and yeah, just have it as such a memorable, special experience. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever throw a surprise party for somebody else? Um, I'm not sure. See, I find it really difficult because now I actually almost feel... Uh, like you know obviously i didn't ask for it but as a person i'm very i always feel like i have to make things right or things have to be just and the fact that all these people made this effort to do this thing for me now i feel like oh you know like now i need to really be mindful and make sure that i i do things for other people these people especially because they did this for me and i i feel like i'm actually awful at um almost planning planning events i'm really bad at i think because with just the way that i've been brought up there have been so many just radical changes to the plans all the time that it's almost impossible for me to plan my own um traject like to almost understand my own trajectory it's very difficult to see where will I be at this point in time so I can do this? So I never actually commit really to plans <laughs> because I say, oh, I don't even know what that's going to look like when I get there. So how am I going to know that I can fully commit to this event or fully commit to this, this thing that I have to do? So I don't, a lot of the time I find it very difficult to plan things and I'm stuck in that mindset. And I think that it would be good for me to sometimes make a bit more effort in that area and say, okay, you know, like you actually need to take responsibility for exactly the direction that you're going to go in so you can make this thing happen rather than just saying, oh, I don't know where I'm going to be and then get there. And then, you know, you, you sort of have to just react to the current situation. That is really interesting, isn't it? Because it, there's pros and cons to both. And yeah. Okay, I'm really sorry, Harry. I'm gonna have to just like quickly close this blind. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Don't stress. Like, we're like on live TV right now. These are the things that happen. Um, so okay, just give me one yeah. one second. Go for it. Ah, that's so much better. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
Yeah, but I completely agree. It's like you just never, you never necessarily know how things are going to plan it. Even actually, that's a perfect example. I had no idea that the sun was going to set like that. And <laughs> you make plans and then life just happens in like the yes. smallest or the biggest ways. I love to hear like, I guess, maybe from like a spiritual or like a faith side of things. Like, do you believe in like a universe or a higher power? Like, what's your take on that side of the world? It's really tough, I think, because, again, I think a, a lot of the recent years of my life have been really getting into, because what I study at university now is science, obviously, and that's sort of one of my big passions is science. And I think that integrating science and religion is actually such a big thing, because a lot of the time I just see a lot of uh, discourse about science and religion being two opposing things for a lot of people. But in reality, for me, I think it's actually you you integrate the two and um, spiritual like spirituality is a pretty tough, I think, space to navigate because there's a lot of I think that there's a lot of people who really want, you know, everyone's obviously exploring that space because it's a big part of being an individual and experiencing the world because we all uh, being a human being that's self-aware, you try to understand what's going on around you exactly in the world and how everything occurs or how it all works. Um, and it's pretty overwhelming at times. So it's very easy to, I think, just seek sit like answers that that sort of well those fears and just say oh you know we can just say this is it and that's it's all okay and it's all going to be okay if i believe in this and i think it's problematic sometimes because it's really easy for people to take advantage of that in that space and you know a lot of stuff comes out and people propagate uh certain ideologies or beliefs and people are really just drawn like you know everyone sort of get like gets these people drawn to their their ideas and stuff and they're all saying that they have the answer but i think it's i think it's pretty arrogant to even claim a belief sometimes because as human beings it's actually almost outside of our scope to a certain degree to even try and understand exactly exactly what's going on i suppose because it's like if we're within this system that's been built i guess the ultimate thing is uh wh like whether this is a sort of system that's been built you know like whether there is something greater outside of it that's created what we live in because i'm not exactly well versed with the terminology in the like theology space i guess of like what like what religion is what and how do they how have they all been derived and that that sort of thing but in my mind I, I look at it as like this like this is a system that's been created i suppose and whatever's created this system outside is obviously a very sophisticated uh maybe a being or something but it's almost impossible to label it again because we we wouldn't actually be able to understand what it is and I think that, um, yeah, I just think it's very difficult almost to try and make a claim to any sort of belief, at, especially at like at my age, because like I, I've only been, I'm only so young. And to say, I believe in this wholeheartedly is really difficult. Um, but again, I suppose that's the whole definition of faith is sort of, believing in something even though it doesn't always um sort of it's not like a scientific explanation exactly yeah that's having faith you know you have faith in it yeah right i think you like nail on the head where you said it's like welling the fears and that's why so many people have to hold on to some type of belief because it's almost as humans like we have so many things to honestly be afraid of and mm. to fearful of like if we get yeah. really deep like we're getting older we're dying people around us are dying like yeah. something can happen any day and if we don't have almost something that we have faith in then the fear takes over so i guess it's something that maybe 
I guess it can be um, debilitating for some people when they lean on that faith too much and they stop taking action in their own lives. But it's almost if you have that bit of faith and use it as fuel for you to go out and act as well. And it just gives you that peace of mind and almost, yeah, like the safety and security to take risks and to do things, um, then maybe it can be used as a positive thing. I guess it's like anything, right? It depends on how you use it for yeah. either good or for for evil. Or that's a really interesting. I just hadn't I hadn't really unpacked it the way that you did though before. I loved hearing you talk about that. It's yeah. just interesting to chat about, isn't it? It's one of my yeah. It's definitely one of my more like one of my favorite areas to sort of look at is how how people think about you know this sort of thing that we're all experiencing and um because obviously science i think science is just an interpretation we just you know it's not actually like science is us discovering things and um you know m making new things it's us interpreting the system that we're sort of in and manipulating it in certain ways to um suit our needs and our purposes but also to um yeah, just to under, actually understand the world is is when we is how we do it through science um but yeah it's really tough i guess because you can get very i suppose it's easy to get lost as well if you don't really believe in anything because it you sort of i i suppose you could easily become quite cynical as as well um but for me i'm just always very open to new ideas and I don't like to um yeah I just don't really like to base a lot of my identity I suppose on beliefs or those sort of belief systems because I think that it it's it could shift so rapidly and dramatically that if you base a lot of yourself on that you and it it's you know proven to be incorrect then you you're lo you lost you're lost after that because it's quite destructive to you as an individual because if you base your whole personality around this belief then as soon as that's proven incorrect then you become you know you're destroyed because that that's you that's your person and i think that that's a large problem in a lot of areas of discussion actually where people you know they place strong opinions or they place strong beliefs on things sometimes and then you can't actually it's actually difficult to discuss with them openly about those things because if you somehow you know if you say something that goes against the belief that they have they perceive it as an attack on their person because they've based their personality on this idea they've attached to it so strongly and then you end up with conflict i suppose yeah <laughs> exactly we're solving the world's problems right now aren't oh, we? yeah it's always good it's always good and then yeah. about an hour later you'll sort of you'll probably even wonder what we were even talking about this entire time yeah well it's just I, one of the things where it's going to be fascinating as you say because we're so young is to looking back on this as to how things are going to change and you're right like being flexible is the best thing that you can be you mentioned you didn't want beliefs or um those types of things to be so closely linked with your identity what do you want your identity to be or what do you see your identity as who is um, gardner <laughs> it's, yeah it's tough i suppose because i like i actually don't uh, i suppose we you know you obviously have your own view of yourself and you characterize yourself on a daily basis but i actually like to almost um like i like figuring out what other people think sometimes and i like figuring out what they think of me or how they see me because you play so i think you play so many different characters to so many different people because they've got a, you know their own version of you that they think you are based on their experiences with you in the past and i think that i actually like to lean into those characters for those people because that's what you know that's how you get the most out of other people to a certain degree because they think of you in this way and that's how they want to interact with you because that's how you fit into their world 
And then if you lean into that role in their life, then that's how you get the most out of those individuals, I find, as a person. But, I mean, sometimes I think that that could be, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, because it could be destructive because, you know, you're sort of malleable and you're not, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's existing as, you know, some sort of true individual to yourself. Uh, I was actually speaking about this with a friend the other day and, and he said he felt similar. It's almost, what was the word we used? A chameleon, whereby, yeah. yes, you have different personalities in different rooms. Of course. Also, it's, you know, we change a lot throughout our lifetime. So if people were to, you know, meet us when we're 10 years old, they might have a particular perspective. But then at 20 years old, we might be completely different, but they still think of us as that 10 year old. And would you almost say it's like the first impression is what has the most lasting impact? Or I don't know. Oh, it's tough. What I actually I like that question a lot because one of my favorite experience one of my favorite experiences of all time and it occurs it occurs multiple times it's it's occurred multiple times in my life but it's a phenomena that i really struggle to explain to people but i'm going to try okay so bear with me one of my favorite is when you meet a person and so obviously you've got this impression of them and they're this certain character in your mind but then as you spend more time with them and then you see that they're actually more developed than that. And there's obviously so much more to them because people are quite complex and they're their whole own worlds that um, are difficult to unpack. But you know, you see more of them and they actually break the character that you've sort of set them as in your mind. So they go against what you think they are. And it's almost like as soon as they do that, they actually look different. It's like they've become a whole new person. It's a really weird thing where, you know, you're hanging out with them and then they do something that you never thought that they could really be based on your perspective of them or your idea of them. And then they do something that goes against that. And it's almost like they actually change. It's almost like they look completely different and you see they look different immediately almost. It's like you're seeing this whole new person because they have just gone against everything that you thought they were in your mind. And that, that that's one of my favorite things ever to, ever to see, like when you make a friend and you hang out with them and you know, you've got this idea of them and they do something that's not that. And you're like, Oh my gosh, they're so complex. Like there's actually so much more there. And it actually almost comes through physically where you see them differently. And do you find it's almost a matrix shift? because it opens up the question of, whoa, I saw the world this way. And then because my assumption is actually completely different, then in what other ways is my assumption completely like unfounded and the world could be so much bigger and brighter or d different than I could even imagine right now? Yeah, definitely. Those moments are so great because I, I think that you do actually understand. It's like, oh yeah, there's actually a lot of stuff that I'm probably missing a lot of the time and you could gain so much more from every every moment of time i suppose and it's um yeah it's really enjoyable i think that's why it's so enjoyable because it is just a complete destruction of your whole i like idea of that thing yeah exactly i almost feel like if i'm being completely honest i feel like this is a moment for us right now like we uh, you know of course we've hung out heaps of times with lisa and with like friends and such but never have had a depth in-depth one-on-one conversation yeah and so many people tell me that you have got such like a world of wisdom and really interesting ideas about the world but we've just never really had that opportunity to do yeah, this yeah it's always been in a social setting exactly do yeah. you always feel like this is one of those moments perhaps where we're like whoa there's different sides of it of definitely life. is it definitely is i think because <laughs> it's um like you said i guess yeah it's so different in a social setting compared to when you speak to someone one-on-one -on -one. it is entirely different because again you like everyone sort of plays these different roles hey you know and like in group settings i found before you know like lisa will be like you know super entertaining like she always comes out a bit more of a shell and well not out of her shell because she's always very much you know 
out of her shell, but she <laughs> um, she really puts on, it makes an effort to entertain almost, I find. It really does. And it's good. I like, it's really I good it. because it, it really, you know, facilitates everyone else's enjoyment and, you know, Absolutely. she's doing it because she wants everyone else to have a good time and, you know, everyone has a good laugh and that sort of thing. But yeah, everyone just plays these different roles almost in the, um, in those social settings as groups but then when you speak to someone one-on-one -on -one, it's so different because you know there's i guess yeah there's just no real um there's no hiding yeah wow that's a that's a key component do you feel like there's any uh, any area of your life that you try to this is kind of deep but any area that you try to like hide or, or any area that yeah um i think oh that's a tough one because i obviously wouldn't want to tell you if there was <laughs> um, but i'm gonna try search to you know try to bring it out i think that um i think a lot of people think that life is um very I think uh, like a lot of the feedback that I get, people think that life is like, they think that I have like, you know, just breeze through almost. And they think that my life is really easy a lot of the time and that, you know, I, I take things in stride and I don't really struggle with a lot of things. And I think that I almost like to like really integrate that. And that's what I like everyone to think because I, I enjoy that feedback. And I'm like, oh yeah, I like, like, I think that is what I would like to be like, because obviously, every individual struggles in their own areas of life. And I think obviously I'd have my own struggles and difficulties with my own thoughts and my own, you know, anything that I do, I'd have difficulties in specific areas. Um, but I think that I like that, uh, I like to exhibit that persona of being in control and just like, I don't I really have to try to, to get through that's such a perfect example because as you say it's almost then do you find when you are struggling you're almost hiding that struggle because you do want people to remain this perspective of you that you're like easy breezy and you can yeah for sure everything. perfect perfect example without you being exposed too much which is good <laughs> yeah yeah it's almost a bit general so you can't yeah, exactly really specifics of where i'm going wrong in life yeah <laughs> No, like what about yourself? Exactly. What about yourself? Do you find that there's anything that you try to sort of really keep away from people or really try to sort of push away? Yeah, absolutely. There are so many things. I mean, there's like, yeah, I think what's an example that I can give which doesn't again expose myself too much? <laughs> um, well, even like so it's my goal to do 15 runs a month. So yeah. I'm very confident that I do the 15 runs, but you know, I speak to a lot of people and they run like 10 Ks, they run like marathons. And like, if I were to compare my stats, because I haven't ran in a long time, like I would feel embarrassed to share like how far I'm running, how fast I'm running. Yeah. Um, so it's little things like that. Or um, yeah, I think another example is I work from home. So my office is down in Melbourne and, you know, I'm quite like, just I feel things very deeply, like I'm a very emotive person. So if I'm having a bad day, like I wouldn't want to be in the office with my team because it'd be very visible and I find it hard to like put on a mask or a brave face. So it's almost I like the element of working from home because I almost get to hide on the days where, you know, I'm not feeling great and I can still be productive, but I'm not having to show myself to the world as much yeah okay i see yeah yeah thank you for asking no all good i thought that i just had to you know i had to get a bit had to get a bit of dirt on you you know <laughs> exactly i know one for one oh, yeah, for sure. I feel like we're, we're square now um which is good but i'm trying to think as to because i know you love these types of conversations is are there any other areas that you generally love discussing or talking about that we can dive into um i think that i like almost talking about anything as long as it's in depth i just enjoy the aspect of it being in depth and you know a bit more developed than just because you know a lot of the time when people uh, i find that a lot of the time sometimes people ask me things and they'll be like 
oh do you like this or this and um and my answer actually i like to almost try to start a much deeper conversation because they'll say do you like this or this and i'll say well you know some days i'll like this but then if i'm feeling like this i like this and you know it all depends on and it sort of evolves into a into a more i suppose nuanced conversation than just um picking one thing over the other so it becomes more than just like black and white or binary it's more more developed than that and i that that's what i really enjoy is almost unpacking things and seeing how complex even the simplest things are sometimes because yeah i suppose one of the big ones for me is i really enjoy um i think i really enjoy i i just have a very positive outlook towards life and i really enjoy life a lot of the time because um it's like especially being young i think it's like you you really i you really i i really feel like i really struggle to even know myself and you can actually like every day you can learn so much stuff about yourself as an individual which is so cool i find because it's almost like it's almost like a memory coming back because you know it's like sometimes it's like you choose something and you don't know why you chose that and you're like oh why why did i choose that like what about me made me choose that and then you you know you sort of unpack that and understand a bit more about yourself because yeah i think that there's so much that goes on within ourselves that we're not even aware of and it's just all under the surface and we don't even understand exactly what what we're doing on a daily basis a lot of the time you're so curious I feel like you're asking a lot of questions with like every area of life. Would you say that that is how you try to approach things? I think, I think so. I think, yeah, I definitely do think so. I, maybe if we dive into the element of Korea. So I'd love to understand a little bit more about, so my perspective of Korea is it's like our contribution to the world and then compensation. So that's of course income and money and that that side um so when it comes to your contribution so of course you're studying with the sciences at the moment tell me more about what you hope to use your career to do and the impact you hope it will have yeah okay that's interesting because i think that contribution and compensation is an interesting way to look at it because um yeah i think it does makes sense i suppose and like for me obviously i try to i think sometimes i i do try to break it down and try to understand you know like okay so like you know we work why do we work and like we all have to do a job but why and you know i think it's because like inherently you know a lot of the time you see stuff and you're like oh you know you people like to like i think people do like to help a lot of the time and do things and you know well, I think I do. I don't know if that's the general general public, but um, I think that in the modern society, it has become very sp specialized where, you know, we are, you know, we choose this pathway where we can understand exactly where we have to go to in order to, in order to help, but it is very specialized, you know, not like we're not very general, you know, a surgeon can't fix cars and you know that like they, they fit very well into this big machine that we've created which is society and for me um i almost don't like the idea of specialization sometimes because i do very much enjoy mastery and you know doing something and becoming becoming better at it, becoming more in depth and understanding it more in depth. And, you know, I just love, I think it's very addicting and it's natural for it to be, to become better. Like that progression of becoming better. That's actually one of the most enjoyable things for me is just that, like that curve of, you know, from be being a beginner to becoming more experienced. I really enjoy that, that and looking back and seeing how far you've come. Um, so, but I also dislike specialization because sometimes i think you know oh what if this happens and i can't actually do anything about it because i don't know anything about that so i that's why i'm trying to be open to so many things and try to learn as much as i can in as many areas as possible so it's it's really difficult and i think i arrived at sort of choosing science because i think it's actually a very good 
way to look at the world and a very good um i suppose it suits my i don't know whether it's it's obviously it's a bit of both where it's shaped my personality to ask a lot of questions but i also enjoy asking a lot of questions so i would have chosen it because of that um and it is yeah you ask a lot of questions you know you try to solve problems or understand exactly why things occur so i enjoy that a lot i think myself and i think it's yeah i just think it's a very good way to think about the world so that's why i chose what i'm studying um and inside i don't actually know exactly how i'm going to utilize it to like you said contribute because um because i don't know if i want i always really struggle with the idea of choosing oh you know i want to do this job because to that to me again sets off this these alarm bells of claustrophobia where i'm like oh you know if you do that job you know you're gonna have to follow that pathway through to the end if you want to be successful in it um and that's i suppose you know to be successful in something is beneficial because you end up having a you usually have a better life if you're more successful i suppose but success is a, it's everyone has different metrics for success so that's a whole discussion on its own i suppose um but to me i guess if you're looking at my life specifically and how i can apply what i'm learning um i just think that at this at this moment in time especially being so young again it's like just learn as much as i can and i think like you know it's it's all about sort of just experiencing as many things as possible and learning as much as possible because that's how you're going to understand actually the more information you have the better the decision you can make i suppose is sort of what i'm trying to say so you know the more you learn and the more you understand about yourself and the more things you try the better you can formulate a pathway of exactly where you want to go i suppose um and for me currently because i i come from png and my i suppose the reason why we lived in png was because that's where my dad owned so he owns a coffee plantation that's his that's his original sort of like job i i, I find it really hard to talk about what my dad actually does people ask me what my dad does and i find it very difficult because he does a lot of things but um i suppose the main original one sort of role that is mapped out in my mind for him was you know growing coffee and um for me i think that that is cool i think that that's very cool and agriculture is very cool so i think um if i could somehow use my knowledge to continue and build upon what he's done i think that would be the most enjoyable and also beneficial pathway to others around me in my life because that way because i've seen him help a lot of people through what he's done so i i think that that it's so accessible through that pathway to to help as many people as possible so i think that that's where i want to go in in life at the moment because it's very hard like i i don't know i don't like to say things for certain because next year you could ask we could do another one of these and you could ask me and i'll exactly. probably say oh no i want to you know work at the airport doing biosecurity so <laughs> oh wow that's very specific exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but yeah as you say it's like it's amazing you're able to almost um continue what your dad has done and all of the wisdom that he's imparted onto you and do you feel like that's something that you would want to also do yourself but i completely relate to that feeling of not wanting to choose a specific path and that feeling of claustrophobia i really relate to that i mean that's why i'm here like in Melaney, because i just wanted to like get out of cans i wanted to see something new and yeah, of <laughs> i totally totally get it um but yeah i guess it's like trying to balance that and then as you say the mastery specialist side um but i feel like we're doing a pretty good job at balancing those um which is nice <laughs> yeah yeah i suppose you can only try so hard and you know yeah like it's 
it's tough. It's try it's tough to balance everything. I talk about my I talk to my brother actually a lot about this, where it's like uh -huh. you know, you, you start something and you get so interested in it, and it's almost like tunnel mm -hmm. vision, and you're like, Oh, this is the coolest thing ever. This is all <laughs> I want to do with my time right now. Yeah. And you get so focused on it, and you know, it's like, yeah, I want to be a master at this. I want to be, mm -hmm. you know, I want to get to this level of proficiency that I'm seeing. Cause I think in the modern day and age, especially as well, you can see so many other people every day that you don't even know. Yeah. because we have you know social media and all these sort of things mm -hmm. um and you can so easily compare yourself with them and just but you it's it, there are so many pros and cons to it yeah. because that interconnectedness you can see those things and see so many new things and you know that pique your interest and you're like oh yeah okay that's what i want to do but then it's overwhelming because you know you do that and then the next week you see something else and you're like oh like that is so fascinating that's all i want to do and it's like you have to be disciplined enough i suppose to actually say okay like what like if i want to do this and mm -hmm. actually action this plan to get to a certain level in this thing mm -hmm. i have to spend this time doing it and i think for me my degree is very good for that because it's a three-year commitment where along the way I've encountered things where I get very interested in them, but I have to say, okay, you actually already have a very big time commitment that you're probably not performing as well as possible in because you're being distracted by these other things. So you should really stick to this for these three years. And then, you know, you can do other things after that. But I think it's a good exercise to try and actually make myself really, you know, focus for these three years. And oh, this last this last trimester that I had was a really good example of that, I think, because I've been, you know, really sort of trying to focus. And I felt in this last semester, I actually felt very a bit burnt out. And I thought, oh, okay, like um, I might actually take a break. So I finished it, and now I'm I'm on a I'm on a bit of a break for five months or so, and then I'm going to keep going yeah perfect i totally get that though it's the distraction and we need to like as opposed to the shiny things it's yeah. to have that progression curve that you were speaking about and to become a master in something it's you almost have to put the blinders on and just trust that no this is something i'm really interested in do you yeah. find that photography was another area that you went down the, the rabbit hole of being really interested in and tell me about that journey because oh i miss your youtube videos honestly yeah. so <laughs> obviously you met me when i was like really into that like that was sort of my like entire thing when you met me so again that would actually stick out in your mind as one of the large aspects of my personality right. and yeah. so for me i think it always has been an interest of mine sort of like especially coming to um you know coming to australia and then like you know it's like meeting all these people and it's like okay and then like i was sort of seeing all this stuff on social media and then seeing so much stuff about like like all these movies and it just all this stuff this whole world opening up and then i i was really i sort of yeah i don't know why it's photography and um sort of filmmaking really stuck out to me and i was really interested in it and i think that it still definitely is super interesting to me and i enjoy it so much but to me it started actually i think it started impacting my happiness a little bit where i um started getting confused about like whether i wanted to be recognized for it or not so i was like okay like you know um a lot of the stuff you'd see online is like how do you turn this into your job and that sort of thing and i was like okay that's what i want you know i want this to be my job like this is this is what i want this is you know this could be a really cool thing to do as a job and that sort of thing and then um i got really sucked into that and as time went on and i sort of you know was trying to do all the things right so that i could you know get into that into that field I started realizing that it actually wasn't very um, suitable for my personality almost because a lot of the things that um, you sort of had to do in the modern day and age to become successful in that was, 
you know you you had to you like you, you had to build your own business and that sort of thing you had to become very marketable and to me i one of my least favorite things ever is trying to tell people how um how i guess how good i am like to trying to sell myself is the, my least i think that's my least favorite thing ever because it well i'm not going to say ever because there's probably a lot of things i dislike but it really stuck out to me that i disliked it quite thoroughly because um you know i just hate I just hate having to justify why people should be consuming what I'm putting out because it just feels so almost preposterous or just arrogant to even suggest, um, you know, like, you, like it, it's almost like a suggestion that the people should be spending their time on me or spending yet, uh, this energy on me when in reality it's like, uh, like what, like I don't, I don't actually. I don't know what justifies that. I just and I couldn't wrap my head around really marketing myself and really sort of um, trying to put myself out there like that because it, yeah, it just it didn't suit. Yeah, it just did not suit me very well. I didn't like it. it didn't feel right. It, did, it, it that's what it sounds like. It just didn't feel right. Like it didn't feel aligned. Yeah, it it definitely did not. And. Um, yeah yeah so it it was really tough and i think that now like i think i will probably get sort of start getting back into it a little bit but definitely more for enjoyment and just as like a hobby yeah. because uh that that's just so much more enjoyable to me like that mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and i think it's just so much more honest because um it's not like I'm trying to make something for people exactly. to recognize me for. Rather, I'm just, you know, just making something that I want to make. And it's like, okay. What? And, and if they see it, they, they'll watch it. Exactly. Exactly. But it also became very confusing to me, like, mm. whether, like, I should share it or, like, where I share it or do it, like, like, the whole social media thing became very confusing to me because I was like, okay, mm. like, I'm putting this stuff up and, you know these people are seeing it and it's just so it was so weird to me because it was like um i almost didn't want to share it on there because it's just more of the same stuff that everyone else is putting out like so many people are just putting this stuff out there and it's all just pouring out and there's just so much of it everywhere and it's like again you're just competing for people's attention and it's i i don't really enjoy doing that i don't think and i became conflicted i was like okay well i don't think I want to share stuff on here because it's not actually I like I don't think it's I just don't want to do it and then I was like okay so then what do I do with these photos and stuff when I take them and I yeah it just became very confusing for me I think as a person like oh what like what do I actually want from this like because I do get so much enjoyment from sharing those things so like obviously it's natural to want to share them but then I it's i i almost think that i don't like social media sometimes because it's um it's too impersonal exactly i really appreciate you sharing that and it's so you're so self-aware to you know get to that point and i definitely resonate with that it's it's similar to with the with this series right it's like pop it up onto the playlist and it's very much the same i was talking to someone and he was like oh if you want to get more views you can do this and you can do that I'm like yeah. no like that's just not the point the point yeah. is to have deep meaningful connections with other humans it's not like i completely resonate with you like i actually when people say oh yeah i'll watch it i'm like you don't act like I don't really want you to watch it. Like you can probably spend an hour of your life doing something more beneficial because I feel like the people who are going to benefit the most from this conversation is you and I. Yeah, and of course. Lisa because she'll like be, you know, loving yeah, it. Yeah, because we're two people that she knows so well. Exactly. That's right. So for the for the bystanders, I feel like it would be more beneficial if either they could 
we could do an interview. I'll interview them, right? Then they're going to get value from it or they go and interview someone else. Like that yeah. would be the most beneficial thing for them. Um, yeah, so I, I completely resonate with that. Wow, we've got so many so many like similarities in our mindset that I've been picking up. I'm like, whoa, we've just never spoken about this before. It's so yeah. cool. <laughs> well, that's interesting for me as well because, mm. you know, when you actually sp like, because it's very rare that you actually sit down and say, because this whole thing is a scheduled meeting where we've said, okay, we're going to, you know, just talk. Yes. But very rarely do you actually do that with people. Mm. I found, and my friend and I were talking about this and we were saying, okay, because a lot of the time, you have to be doing something, you know, like you have to say, oh, okay, let's go grab a coffee. Let's go do this. And there's almost a distraction there. So it's like, okay, if, you know, if there's any tough um, social aspect, we can just avoid it by doing whatever activity it is that we've got planned. So it's like going back to what we were talking about earlier, it's hiding, right? Yeah, we're hiding, we're to a certain degree, I think it is. But obviously, like, you know, there, there are activities that you both think you'll, both enjoy together and that sort of thing but it's, it is very rare that you sit down and say okay like we're just actually gonna like we're just gonna talk that's the activity we're just gonna hang out um and i think that it's almost like it can't go wrong if you just sit down and say okay we're just gonna talk and hang out and you're gonna find a lot of similarities with a lot of people if you do that because you're the only two people with input i suppose in the whole I guess agenda is to try and understand each other so you're gonna bring up points of relevance that are similar to them and they're gonna inspire things that you know are relevant to what they're talking about so it's almost like if you go in with the intention of having that productive conversation it's going to happen organically and it's going to be productive and beneficial and you're going to find all those similarities naturally because that's the whole mission that's the whole idea of having a conversation i suppose oh you get it a hundred percent and it then gives more confidence when you're out in the world knowing i guess just keeping these conversations top of mind and then we're more likely to go maybe a little deeper when we are speaking to people like in our day-to-day -day lives now and i think yeah it's interesting what you say i've had people chat about it and it's actually quite an unnatural thing because oftentimes when you do have deep and meaningful chats, it's spontaneous yes. as opposed to planned. And it's also very rarely recorded. It's very rarely shared and posted. And most of the time it is in person and with people that you have known for years and had these conversations with many of times. Yes. So in a lot of ways, what I'm doing here is very unnatural. And that's why I found even when I've had conversations with people that I'm very close with, it can still have that almost, uh, yeah, like uncomfortableness about it, or awkwardness. <laughs> and yeah. So it's like such a challenge to find those magical conversations that flow. But when they do, then you're always bound to find nuggets. And I think, yeah, it's just one of those things where it doesn't matter if it's awkward or uncomfortable. Like, yeah, it's just, it's a part of the process and learning and it's a part of the fun of trying something new and, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely, for sure. I think that's, I think that is pretty interesting that you were saying that it still like can be sometimes a little bit awkward. And I find that, you know, there's just, there obviously are periods in time where even yeah people you're so close to it's like you can't know people entirely ever it's it's impossible because you know you think oh yeah i know this person really well they're my really good friend but you know in reality you've only spent like such a small fraction of their lives with them and they've experienced so much of life by themselves without you so they're like they're, you just can't know them entirely ever so there's just so much still there so like it doesn't even matter um you know how long you've known someone they can always surprise you and just sort of break those molds which is really nice but then it can always be awkward as well because again you know there's always stuff that's like oh i didn't know that they were like that i didn't know that they would do like do that in this situation because yeah you just can't know people entirely that's so true. And then even do you find, I mean, you very well may find this when you watch this video back. We also deal with ourselves. Like we spend our entire lives with 
you know, ourselves. But then when I watch these videos back, I'm like, oh, do I really do that? Do I really say that? And it's almost getting to know you as well. Yeah. <laughs> From like a third party perspective it's just a never-ending learning and yeah it's fascinating isn't it yeah yeah i hate watching myself <laughs> back and recording it's really difficult to get um get comfortable watching yourself back actually i really disliked it um which i think is natural it's i think though like those i think those teenage years are so interesting and one of my friends that i i talked to a bit um I met him down at uni actually he's studying to become a teacher uh we were talking about sort of the high school years and he wants to become a high school teacher because he thinks like we were both sort of talking about how that's the pardon me uh that's sort of the like those years where it's actually really it's so weird and like looking back at high school i realized like wow it's a really weird time because that um you you are sort of finally becoming like self-aware mm -hmm. and you becoming aware of how you impact other people and you know all these sort of things and you you're in this environment full of other kids doing it at the same time and it's just such a yeah it's such an important period of time mm -hmm. in people's lives but it, it is very confusing mm -hmm. yeah it's it's i find that it, it's a very interesting and uh it could be a bit like I see why, you know, people like some people think it really sucks that period of sort of growing up, you know, and it's very almost awkward. Yes. And, you know, as I've grown up and now I'm where I am now and, you know, now when I watch myself on a recording, I'm like, OK, like, you know, I sort of know my like at least my physical self to a degree. I was like, you know, I've seen myself a lot of a lot of times and now I actually know I sort of have, I think, like a, a reasonable pardon me image of myself in my mind so yeah it's, it's not you know like i'm looking at it and going like oh i just like i really am almost embarrassed that like that's me but you know when you're growing up and you look at yourself and you're like oh that like that's me that's really embarrassing actually lisa sent me a photo of myself the other day from like i was probably 15 or so like that's so embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> show anyone oh but it's just it's the growing pains and it's definitely mm. pain um but i'm so glad we made it through yeah definitely <laughs> on the other side we're in our 20s now <laughs> it is it, yeah <laughs> it's very interesting because i definitely think that a big one is almost like trying to um yeah just becoming a bit more aware and a bit more objective about it where it's like yeah, you're just an individual like everyone else. So, you know, like growing up and that sort of thing, like you'd see other individuals and you'd be like, oh yeah, you know, like you're never judging them that harshly because they're just other people out here. And obviously you do form judgments and that sort of thing. But, you know, when you see yourself and you're like, oh, like you you have a very specific idea of yourself almost, I think, or um, I suppose it's, yeah you you think of yourself a certain way and then you see yourself in a recording or something and it it's very different to how you picture yourself in your mind and you're instantaneously just so revolted by this idea that you're not this ideal being that you've created in your own head oh that's so true you you said it right it's like you wanted to just be this ideal specimen where like you're perfect in everything and you never had an awkward phase but expectations hey expectations that's something i've been learning this year is my expectations have really been like been almost a detriment to my life and my happiness i have just got such high expectations or my expectations aren't matching reality and it's just really interesting like as you say when you look back on your younger self expecting you to have it all figured out when you're a teenager you're going through puberty and like all of the things it's yeah, just, it's tough yeah. Time, hey? <laughs> tough times i think yeah we almost need a master class on expectations because if our expectations of ourselves were a little lower then we might be a little happier do you think yeah i don't know it's a tough one because obviously you want to you know your goals to be lofty because there's that like you know there's a whole saying like you know shoot for the stars land on the moon or like you know you you like the higher you aim the higher you're going to achieve because even if you miss that goal you know you're gonna achieve higher than if you set your goal lower um so it's good to you know have those high 
expectations sometimes and those goals that are you know really push you to to achieve higher um i think this is one where lisa and i really differ is where i really like to i think i i do actually enjoy almost putting a lot of pressure on myself a lot of the time and really striving for that perfection but i think it's just that you have to understand that you're not not actually going to attain it but you just have to maintain that ideal and strive for it so that you can get as close as possible like it, you always strive for it but you just have to understand that you'll never get there and it's it's frustrating but it's i suppose it's also enjoyable in that sense where it's like yeah mm -hmm. you, you know like you work you work hard yeah it's a struggle worth worth struggling for or it i feel like you would need to have a strong self backing though to not associate your self worth with the attainment of that goal so yeah. most be like yeah i'm cool i know who i am and i'm gonna have a happy life or i'm gonna enjoy the journey along the way but i'm still gonna keep trying to get to everest or yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, for sure. might be um, i think that one of the ones that sticks out mm -hmm. in that area the most for me is actually mm -hmm. with um with sport because you know i've really enjoyed sport growing up and especially coming to australia where there's actual sport that is organized because where i come from we didn't have any of that i mean there is some but i never actually played any organized sport growing up and like there just aren't really resources for it um so coming here where there's like you know organized sport you know you participate every weekend there's teams there's you know you get uniforms and there's all these resources available there are coaches and all this stuff it's so crazy and i like i just loved it so much and um i suppose cricket was the sport that sort of stood stood out for me because uh well i just had a my brother and i we had sort of sort of a natural um like aptitude for it and we enjoyed it a lot because we played it growing up with our dad and uh but it's really difficult because with sport it's such a um it's just like a really good representation of almost like i don't know it's almost like a good uh, it's very it's it's really hard it's a concept that i've been talking about a lot recently but it's like a small scale thing that represents a lot of what we do in life because you know it's like you've got this goal that you're trying to attain as a team and you sort of have to do as much as you can to get there and work in a team and that sort of thing and you know it is actually devastating to lose because you you base so much worth on winning like you know that's all you want to do and it's like that's it like let's let's win this game because you know it's a commitment and you really enjoy it and you're like okay that's all that matters to me in this is winning this um and when you lose it's so devastating because you actually do stake a lot on it like you know you really tried hard to win it and so much is lost when you lose and i think in sport also having expectations of yourself where you know you if you um think you know i should be performing at this specific level and then you don't and you disappoint yourself it's actually so destructive because you st i like a lot of the time when i was growing up i actually staked so much of my worth on how good i was at this sport because you know you get recognized by other people for how good you are at it and that's what they talk about and that's you know a large part of your personality so then it's actually part of your worth how you perform and then when you don't live up to that it really can be quite destructive because you're like oh like you know what do i have now that you know i've spent all my time trying to be good at this thing and i'm not as good as i was supposed to be so it's it's very tough to contend with but i think it's it's a really it's actually a really good exercise and like how did you navigate that how did you change your mindset so that you were able to disassociate your self-worth with if you won or if you lost with cricket um i think it got to a point where <laughs> pardon me um i was so i was competing at a level where it was actually a large part of my self-worth to be successful in it because that's actually what i wanted to do with my career so i was you know really trying hard in this sphere and it got to the point where i thought okay i don't actually enjoy having this much of myself staked in this one almost narrow aspect of of my life like i'm so much more than just my cricket but like that's all 
that I gain my value from at the moment. So I thought, okay, like, you know, I'm going to actually take a bit of a step back from that and explore more things in life and get value out of other things in life to understand that there's more outside of cricket. And even when I'm not successful in that, that there's still so much to be enjoyed. Exactly. It's that mindset shift, hey, because otherwise you can get like lost in the weeds almost. And yeah. that's where some people give up and then miss out on something that, yeah, brings them a lot of happiness. Harry, we, I can't believe it. We've already spoke for an hour and a half. Yeah, I, it's, it's getting on. Honestly, I have really, really enjoyed this conversation. I feel so grateful for you sharing all of this and to have had the opportunity to listen and learn more about you and learn from you. Thank you so much. I'm really honoured that we had this time. And I would honestly love to do a part two, maybe in a year or so, like in a couple of years. Yeah. We can yeah. do a part two and see how our lives have um yeah have unfolded since then but how do you feel after this was this good for you yeah yeah no it was uh it was great i think that um i i feel like i'll probably go back and then reflect and think oh you know i should have actually asked more questions myself and no, you know, it's your interview it's i know i know i know I, was just, <laughs> I, 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 just, I just can't help but feel that way because that's you yeah. know that's just how i i am as a person i guess yeah. but um no it was really enjoyable to talk about those things and i think that again conversation is actually i think that conversations like this or just conversation in general and getting to know people is one of my favorite activities of all time so oh, fun. It, yeah, yeah. it's really um really valuable for me and navigating it because you know at the start it's like yeah it actually is you know you're trying to work out exactly how best to communicate things with this other individual because you know every individual is different mm -hmm. and I was actually struggling a little bit at the start. I was like, okay, like, you know, oh, really? I'm trying to go into these stories and I'm like, oh, how much do I unpack? How much do I, you yeah. know, like, what, like, what do I share and all, all yeah. this. But then, like, you know, as time went on and I, I sort of got more yeah. comfortable, it, you know, it's, it becomes a little more natural and it flows a lot better. So I think that it was really good. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. And now we're so much closer. So for when we come back to Cairns and we're hanging out as a group, um, I'll be keen to yeah, delve more into these topics, knowing like all of our similarities. Yeah, yeah. Harry, this has just been awesome. A really, really great use of my afternoon. So I just want to thank you. I'm really, really grateful. Yeah, looking forward to sharing this. As we spoke about, if someone wants to watch it, they're more than welcome but it's up to them. Uh, we'll we'll look back on it when we're 80 and I'm sure we'll be proud we took the time. So enjoy yeah. the rest of your, your weekend, your Sunday, Arvo, and I will see you when I get back to Cairns in a couple Thanks of months. Thanks so much, Jasmine. That was awesome. I'll see you then. All right. Bye, Harry. Bye. Bye.